Hi, everyone. I'm here today to welcome Sean Chang, who's Head of Fixed Income at Ping An of China Asset Management. What you may not know if you're not familiar with Ping An is that this is the largest insurance company in the world and an extraordinarily important asset manager globally and in China. We're thrilled to have you with us today, Sean. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, tell us a little bit about, well, what you want to talk about today and what you see as the market developments that everyone needs to know about. Right. Um, I, I think the message that uh, we have today is very important because, um, as we all know, uh, green initiatives now becoming an important part of our not just investment, but also our daily life. And uh, we have to focus uh, from all aspects. Uh, and I, I do think that uh, green and environmental protections uh, would become the norm basics uh, for not, not uh, only uh, here in this part of the region, but globally. So uh, I would recommend everyone to be um, raising their awareness uh, about um, the environment and also what we've been going to be discussed today uh, would uh, be very uh, thoughtful and uh, would um, able to have those insights everyone could share with each other. And in, in terms of being part of this conference, and we have to thank you for having joined us as a, as a sponsor for the Climate Bonds Conference 2021. Um, we're thrilled to have you part of this. But tell us about why and what you're engaging globally in this fashion. Uh, for one thing, um, we need to highlight Ping An as one of the uh, leader in the uh, insurance and finance field. Um, Ping An also one of the pioneer in the responsible investment of the UN. And uh, we also noticed that um, in 2016, uh, there are the uh, climate initiatives, uh, as well as the uh, the, the Paris, uh, how to protect the environment. And Ping An um, is really committed to it. And we share those processes uh, within our group and for uh, China, uh, asset management here in Hong Kong, uh, we have these initiatives applied to our investment process as well as our fund management. So here today, I'm going to share some of uh, our philosophy, you know, how that applies to our fixed income fund strategies here in Hong Kong and uh, what are those implications and how could we impact uh, to these uh, green in initiatives here in Asia, China, as well as globally. Tell me a bit more about that then. Let's get there to this. You talk about philosophy and approach. Tell us more. Um, I, I do believe that uh, investors uh, initially would have the concern, um, uh, you know, how much uh, of these strategies can able to help them generate income returns. Uh, but these days, I think in other um, factors, we have to be considered um, how much impact and um, we, we're talking about those uh, carbon uh, reductions uh, apply uh, to these investment process and how much green we're going to share, you know, within our investment. Um, I, I, I think people would need to recognize uh, return is important, risk are important, um, but we also have to adjust uh, how much green we, we can able to save and how much environment we can able to protect. Um, so we have uh, this strategy has been in place since 2019, and for the last uh, more than a year, we, we have been successfully uh, have well received those responses. And uh, we also being that fortunate uh, this year, we have won the award uh, with some of the uh, well-known uh, media, um, and that widely recognized in the industry that uh, our approaches, investment process, philosophy. Uh, can be uh, widely um, uh, recognized um, here in, in, in China, in Asia. Uh, I'm sure uh, there are investors uh, having those concerns uh, whether China Green can apply those taxonomy uh, similar to those in the UN and other major markets. Um, I have to say, you know, uh, for the last one over one year of development, uh, China policymakers have put in lots of effort and um, trying to align uh, with those standards in the EU and uh, other major markets. And we are close to that. Um, 
uh, despite the fact that uh, I, I think still uh, the market is uh, not uh, as by and large, um, uh, the population not as big as the EU, for example, uh, but um, the China in the green financing areas has grown tremendously over the past three years and policies and regulations has been very supportive. Um, organizations within China, policymakers, uh, they having great support uh, to all these initiatives. And I'm sure uh, with the Le Club of Paris, China's would also able to uh, meeting those target objectives uh, in the next um, 20 years. So um, that, that is a, a really encouraging sign um, uh, and being one of the leaders um, in, in that particular field by China. Indeed, with the President Xi Jinping's 3060 announcement of um, carbon neutrality by uh, 2060, we have a very ambitious target for the Chinese economy, and that's being reflected in different regulatory measures. Um, just for the audience to know, we've been working with Ping An uh, of China as a manager for some time, providing data around bonds that in the Chinese market would also meet the international criteria as a, as a data set. Um, I'm sure Sean can talk about that another time if people can interested in more detail. But the key thing is that the Chinese government has been moving towards greater integration of global markets as well as uh, promoting more CO2 relevant measures in the Chinese market, including of course, the introduction of emissions trading scheme. Um, and later on, this week, on Thursday, we will hear about the common ground taxonomy that um, we've been supporting the European Commission and the Chinese government, uh, People's Bank of China, on developing, which will be released uh, later in September in a draft form. So there are many measures happening. It's pretty exciting, isn't it, Sean? I mean, this market, of course, the green bond market, just that market, is going to grow something like 80% this year in China, which must make your job easier with a larger universe to look at in terms of potential investments. Um, is that right? And, uh, and what's the, what are investors that you're speaking to saying? How interested are they in this topic? What's the demand like? Well, um, I, you know, this is a, a really exciting moment. Um, I think in China um, and uh, the green market um, now being able to broaden itself from transportations to energies to water, um, you name it. Um, so uh, this market actually even surpassed the old traditional um, uh, China bond uh, being now very diversified and investors could able to broaden up um, their investment scope. Um, I, I think to those investors, if they have yet to explore this um, China bond market, the green market would be even more interesting because um, I, I think in U, U, EU and other major markets, um, if they have already been fully invested, now this is a new market and um, not just exciting in the sense, you know, how these market impacts could able to help China and globe about the green environment, but also um, in terms of investment opportunities. Um, this is a very significant way to help global investors to diversify their portfolio. Um, so uh, I think with this uh, more than you know, 15 trillion market now uh, with this component uh, is growing faster and much bigger, uh, investors could able to uh, do their due diligence properly and could able to apply to their portfolio and, and how they could reduce the risk as well as you know, try to avoid those greenwashing um, in their homeland. I, I think that's an important point that um, ma uh, managing the risk the greenwashing risk, but also the returns risk. I mean, what we're seeing in the global markets is that green bonds perform better in secondary markets than in uh, than compared to our vanilla bonds because of their extra features that the investors are particularly, particularly keen on. So there are it's a value retention vehicle for investors here. Do you find that the nature of understanding and demand from investors is similar across the region? I mean, you have clients everywhere. Of course, or do you see some differences? Where do you? What sort of differences do you see, if any, in terms of best Inter understanding? Interesting that uh, for uh, last couple of years, um, Asian investors has been a bit slower 
uh, because as we all know, the taxonomy in the EU, uh, they have already been applying it for more than decades. Mm -hmm. Here in Asia, it was a bit slow, but the pace picking up um, last 12 months have grown really fast, like how you described it. And investors, for example, here in Hong Kong, uh, those organizations and uh, uh, su supervisory um, bodies, they have um, uh, really well-defined um, if I can name an example, uh, Hong Kong Stock Exchange has been applying the standard in disclosing information about those ESG and green data uh, with all these listed companies since 2018. Investors could able to do that audit their due diligence uh, within mm. those Hong Kong listing companies and could able to find out you know, if um, th those transitional processes uh, or those major impact uh, could able also change that um, kind of behavior in uh, applying green standard. So um, we are here in this part of the region, exciting, you know, seeing lots of changes. Uh, policies are very supportive and there are new names uh, from uh, the regions could able to support uh, this market continue to grow. So sustainability uh, also applies here and um, it is uh, across the whole spectrum uh, peoples can make use to that uh, in their investment universe. And in terms of what your advice to people about identifying and capturing the opportunities, what do you tell people when people ask that question? For example, um, if we referring to some of our strategies in 2020, um, this new market actually we, we picked up um, uh, from these uh, new IPOs uh, these new names issuers, uh, some of those we never heard before, uh, some of those they could be a three-year startup. Uh, there are a huge premiums investors could able to pick up, uh, not just the meeting those requirements, but um, also being able to capture these additional premiums uh, to have alpha source generation. Um, so this part would be very exciting exciting and uh, on average, if uh, we referring to investment grade bonds, the spread uh, would be in the range of about 120 to uh, probably 200 basis points of um, spread um, over the comparable treasuries. But sometimes you can able to identify another 30 to 50 basis points premiums, uh, intrinsic value uh, in, in these green bonds uh, here in China uh, and Asian region. So we sure, find these so cool, kind of it? strategies. Yes, that is so they cool. have this standard as well as the additional alpha sources we can generate it. And that's proven um, our track record within 2020 being a successful one. And that demonstrate uh, the opportunities is here. And uh, we are exciting to share with you today and with the audience. Uh, I mean, that is an amazing story. It's a fantastic story. So let's talk about growth and development. Uh, we've talked about the broader issue of the 3060 target and how that's impacting policy development around China. And, you know, we are in contact with study groups all over the place that are figuring about how to implement these strategies and let alone developments like the ETS. And, uh, and I just heard from one of my uh, other colleagues in China talking about the extent we're now seeing CO2 factors beginning to appear in import and export taxes in China. The government's doing a lot. What does it mean for where what opportunities we're going to see? I mean, do you think there's going to be a lot more bonds from renew, renewable energy sector? Do you see more water bonds? What what kinds of sectors are, are do you think we're likely to see more of? So at the moment, um, still the energy and the power sectors has uh, you know dominate um, a large part of um, uh, the, the green area, followed by, for example, building and infrastructures. Uh, last but not least, the transportation about the uh, environmental uh, recyclable uh, related uh, transportation systems uh, also being uh, a fast growing one. Uh, going forward, we probably would see uh, there are more uh, resources uh, invested into, for example, uh, waste recycle uh, in, for example, the, uh, uh, the land uh, related uh, infrastructure projects um, um, how to deal with um, the waste and uh, how to deal with uh, these uh, disposable um, would be one of the main focus. Um, and there, there's going to be lots of um, fiscal spending by countries and 
cities um, applying into these uh, reci recycle systems, uh, that will make these particular sectors to grow um, compare, as compared to, for example, energy uh, and other uh, sources of, uh, for example, water utilities um, and other areas. Um, so I, I think the governments uh, would put a, a lot of attention to investors because they lag behind uh, for the last couple of years. But I'm sure as this uh, ball keep on rolling, um, the governments uh, would put more initiatives and will catch up with the private sectors. And they could even, um, uh, uh, being the PPP, the public and private participations as a, a jointly uh, putting effort uh, into uh, these uh, sectors across the board into the, all these industry uh, could able to um, catch up uh, later on. So um, uh, the market uh, previously has uh, focused on lots of attention on the hardware, you know, how they could uh, build a system uh, to meet those um, carbon reductions uh, objectives. Uh, but I think transitional um, uh, green would also be one of the important areas because those traditional um, power jankles um, uh, somehow um, they couldn't uh, all of a sudden retire uh, their, their equipments. But um, I, I think the governments have to take those policies and initiatives sharing with these utility companies how to transform uh, their power generations uh, to a more green initiatives focus. Um, and that could also well be you know, another uh, major aspects coming for 2022 onwards. Uh, because uh, again, I, I think the uh, policymakers have lack of these kind of supports before. Um, and for example, here in Hong Kong, those major uh, power generation companies, the three major ones, um, if we review their auditing uh, performances, um, they still a bit lag behind uh, as compared to other major cities like uh, in Singapore uh, or in other major parts of the world in Europe or in the US. So I do believe um, the Hong Kong governments uh, would uh, put in uh, more policy support um, and in order to transform uh, some of these um, uh, uh, processes uh, to a more uh, green and carbon reduction focus. Uh, last but not least, uh, from hardware to those transitional processes, uh, and it comes to reporting and auditing. Um, at the moment, uh, for example, we use here Hong Kong uh, as an example, um, uh, a stock exchange would take those initiatives applying to those listing companies. But what about other public companies? What about other private companies if they are not listed? Are they meeting those requirements, right? Uh, would there be any um, uh, covenant indentures um, of, uh, for example, bond issuers would follow suit and applying these kind of standards when they do fundraising, when they do financing? So um, in terms of the uh, legal aspects in terms of the disclosures and in terms of those policy making, uh, we will see that as the third leg of um, growth and initiatives to support the whole ecosystem um, um, that can able to sustain. So these three major areas um, uh, we foresee in 2022 onwards uh, would be um, those limelight uh, and able to uh, pay a lot of attentions to those and could able to find uh, more interesting ideas, uh, not just for investment, but to analyzing uh, these um, uh, green taxonomy here in China and the Asian region. So we have a lot of regulatory work, a lot mm -hmm. of market work going on, which is only going to turbocharge this market. A exactly. Yes. Agree. Totally so, agree, Sean. Look, it's yeah. an exciting space to be in, Sean. Uh, look, mm -hmm. I, 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 we're very privileged, thrilled to have you with us today. I have to thank say. you, Sean. Um, and, and thank you to Ping An China Asset Management for the kind of work that you're doing in making these opportunities more available to investors. This is a big part of the change in our ecosystem we need to see. Um, Sean, any final words before we wrap up? Well, the final words is, you know, China, you know, is going to be one of the green leaders. And we, as part of uh, the uh, SAR government, uh, Hong Kong would also take lots of those initiatives. And uh, if we could focus more a bit on those three major aspects areas, um, I do believe investors as well as the green community uh, would find a lot of um, interesting ideas um, for 2022. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And look forward to keeping, keeping up this conversation. There's so much happening 
and still so much to do to make it work. Thank you. Thank for you for having us. us. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sean.